All right, we're going to get to a Babe Ruth swing that was sent to me by Justin Kane. Thank you, Justin, and thank you guys for all the swings that you send um, and all the, the different uh, swing mechanics topics uh, that you send to me. So first I wanted to just show, and this was also sent to me by, by a viewer. Uh, thank you, whoever sent this. This is a very lead arm dominant swing. Um, and what's funny with swing mechanics is you can see elite level mechanics in younger players and, and like it's something that you, you can actually see like almost a 10 uh, swing in like little kids like they're in terms of how they're utilizing their body there's all i mean i'll see some kids i'm like i would not change a single thing but i would not want to i would never change anything in a five-year-old swing really i would give him the tools to to just create a different swing but what i'm saying is that there's nothing that i would want to see more or less of in his swing um and as you guys know I'm looking, when I look at the swing, I'm always judging it against how, how much of a lead arm dominant structure is it. Uh, is, there, is there any indication that the back arm at the time that they were learning the swing was maybe exerting a little bit too much? So that's the way I'm always coming at every swing. So I hope you guys like these swing analysis videos, but... If you don't agree with me on that, it's probably going to be uh, kind of painful to watch. But hopefully I can convince you if you don't agree that this is the main thing to look for, is a, is a lead arm dominant structure, as I like to call it. So this is very lead arm dominant, this kid. And typical of lead arm dominance, they're very upright when they start their swing. They tend to, they could have a bat tip. They're not having a bat tip that's tight and maybe doesn't seem to go with the flow of the movement. They're literally just flowing. They've learned this more lead arm dominant action. And when you have more of a lead arm dominant action, you tend to know how to, how to work the power up. Your body is more in control of the swing. And we see this a lot from guys who are very lead arm dominant. Typically, I like to see the swing from the side angle. I don't really like this view. But this is a good indication of what a lead arm dominant action looks like from this down the line view you can see this is the really telling position this is very ted williams like this position here the the back arm has clearly allowed gravity to take it there's no real exertion of it it's just supporting the move in terms of the back arm i like to see it it's it's almost like it's it's pushing out in this direction because of the rotation of the body and its attachment to the body but it's also allowing gravity to drop it so it's at once exerting force but also on this plane sort of dropping down so it's like it's exerting force and moving as it does and uh but you can see that it's this is very much look how dropped and, and the barrel is that's the key this is again a, a very and a very, very good swing. I'd have to see it from the side angle, but I would bet that this kid is very lead arm dominant um, in his action. He probably hits the ball very hard for his size. That's what you see with lead arm dominance. Um, and you can see the caption says, um, Adrian Chow with a nuke to right, he generates incredible power with a lot of whip in his swing. Well, what's, the, what's whip mean when we break it down? Whip means that there's a bigger part of the body of, of the instrument or the person that is controlling more of a loose and, loose and relaxed, more external part of the body. Um, so it says that the arms are loose, the body are more controlling the arms. People don't really realize that the, you have to realize that that's just... That's just a byproduct of being more lead arm dominant in your structure. You can't, you can't create this without understanding that. 
because you'll just continue to be in that more back arm dominant structure. You have to know in swing mechanics what exactly is causing the problem. This is why swing mechanics is such a dangerous game to play. You have to be right on the mark. Um, and if you're not, you're going to have these vicissitudes in your performance. You might have the swing for a long period of time, but then you're, you're liable to get off track because you don't know exactly what the key element is. And that's what I think the lead arm dominant understanding of the swing delivers. It delivers something that you can always go back to when you lose track. Now, as he rotates into contact, you can see, look how well connected he is. Look how upright he is. And he has just let the hands drop and the arms and the barrel drop onto the plane because the back arm isn't overexerting. And he's, he doesn't have to tilt so much. He's just staying pretty much upright and the bat is at the ball's level. And here you can see, as he goes into contact, notice kind of a, a thrusting of the body into the hit. What you'll see with more back arm dominant structures is you'll see more of a leaning back as, he, as they push into the hit. And then the extension nicely through contact. It's hard to see from here, but you can kind of tell there's a very late breaking of the wrist. Look how wide the bat must have taken to get to this point, right? And now the wrist break. Typically, this breaking of the wrist happens soon after contact in very back arm dominant hitters. But here it's happening almost at the end. That's, again, a sign of lead arm dominance. These aren't positions that you should be trying to force into your swing. That's something that swing mechanics has gotten off uh, track on is that they're, they're looking at the swing as being something that you need to force positions. And the unfortunate thing is not only are they trying to force positions, but oftentimes they're trying to force positions that aren't even good. So it's a double whammy um, that you get with most uh, instruction these days. Now, here's the Ruth swing I wanted to look at. Very similar movement to start the swing that you saw from Chow. Um, again, Ruth was very lead arm dominant. Uh, he, uh, he wrote with his lead arm. Uh, which tells me, and then he used very heavy bats at a young age. And that tells me that he just had those two things going for him. And he's just going to be more likely to develop a great swing. Plus, he tried to copy Brother Matthias and trying to hit these towering uh, pop-ups. Um, now, people would think, well, that's the launch angle thing that he's, uh, that he's developing there. I don't really think so. I think it's more that he was just trying to hit the ball hard. And in doing that with a bigger bat, with a lead arm that was more dominant and therefore his back arm a little bit less dominant, less likely to take over, that just helped him even more. It helps to just try to hit the ball hard, especially when you're developing your swing, because you learn to use more of your body to control the swing. Your body knows if I'm going to hit this ball as hard as possible, I'm going to have to use mostly my body to hit. Um, look at this movement here. This is really the position, a position that really sets him apart. This right here. Think about how the back arm is here. It really just dropped to his side. It's supporting the move for sure. But it just kind of dropped to his side and look how flat the barrel is. So it's in this kind of kind of tucked position, but obviously not pushing outward, not overexerting here. Just beautiful positioning here. I mean, the, the bat is trailing the rotation of the body, and he's shifted a, just a beautiful amount of weight onto the front foot. There's no hanging back and leaning back of his torso. He's going to put his body weight into this hit. And here you can see that typical rotation without a hard extension of the back arm. And he's putting everything, he's thrusting into this hit with his body. Again, very different from what you tend to see from today's hitters where they're leaning back so much. And then the extension, you can even, you can really see the extension there of the back arm after contact. And then it, it extends fully about here 
But I just love, you know, we, we, we saw two swings today that were from angles that I don't typically look at. This is from behind. Um, and the other one was down the line with Chow. But it, it you can still see certain things. I always prefer more of the front angle. But you can it, it's a different look at some of these lead arm dominant characteristics. You can just see the whip in the bat of Ruth. And again, what is implied with a whip is there's a there's a a body that is controlling the the more external loose um part of of the swing. And there you can see that's about when his wrists break. About right here. Um, so hope you guys like this. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Uh, I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, check out my website, theswingmechanic.com. Uh, have my lead arm training bat there and my Swing Like Griffey ebook. Thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care.